Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and welcome to Knife AQ. This is Knife AQ number 10. It's the series where I get to answer all your knife questions, whether they're big or small. Let's check out the questions. All right, before I dive into the first question, I've actually got a request. Now, I rarely ask you guys to uh, do anything for us. I just like to kind of create a cool space for you guys to hang out and watch some cool knives, but I am gonna ask you to do something today. Um, at the beginning of the year, actually on the very last day of 2019, we cracked 50,000 subscribers on this channel and we are nearing 100,000 already. And we would really love it if we could hit 100,000 before the end of the year, but to do that, we're gonna need uh, some of you folks who may not be subscribed, but love to watch these videos to go ahead and subscribe. That's it, That's uh, that's. I'm not trying to do a hard sell or anything. We would just love to hit that milestone, but we need your help to get there, so anyway. On to the first question, which today comes from Mr. Justin Gall or Gaia, something like that. Um, Hi, David. I'm looking for an EDC fixed blade that could double as a throwing knife. I have both dedicated throwing knives and EDC blades already, but I'd like to have an EDC blade. I don't have to worry about chipping or breaking if I throw it at a wooden target, not for self-defense, just to pull out as a party trick. I gotta admit, I kind of rolled my eyes at this question. Don't don't throw your, your EDC knives, man. That's not cool. Um, the reason I say that is it, it comes down to the way a throwing knife is built versus the way an EDC knife is built. Uh, and it's mostly down to the hardness of the steel. A knife you're gonna throw has gotta be, uh, withstand a lot of shock and vibration, so they're typically hardened a bit lower. If you got a good steel that's going to be hold an edge well for an EDC blade, they're going to be a bit harder. So they're going to be, even a tough steel can be more brittle when you throw it against something. Um, so I, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> if you're going to, um, I mean, I guess go with something with a, a tough carbon steel uh, and a company that's got a good warranty, because chances are you're probably going to break your knife. Um, this is not what I'm recommending, but I've got an SE Ashley game knife right here. SE, of course, has a very famous warranty. Anyway, next question. <laughs> Mark H. Phelps says, I'm looking for a folding sheep's foot or worn cliff, bar lock, stonewashed, S3035-45, non-assisted, sub four inch, American made, deep carry knife under $200. You can pick the scale material. How magnanimous of you. I get to pick the scales. <laughs> That was a tough list, man. Um, and actually, I don't think I nailed everything perfectly, but the first one comes real close. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna say where you say S30, 35, or 45 steel, I couldn't find anything that hit that, but I'm gonna just kinda fudge that and say you want a good steel. Uh, so the first one right here, the Benchmade Griptilian. Uh, the higher end version with the modified sheep's foot blade comes in 187 bucks. Three and a half inches, so you're in your uh, in your length range. American made, axis lock, uh, 20 CV steel, so even uh, even better, quote unquote, than your uh, S30 to 35s to 45s. G10 handles on this one, and a nice deep carry pocket clip. Little bit of handle sticks up, uh, sticks out past that, but it is nice and deep carry. There's not a whole lot to worry about there. Doesn't quite have a stone wash finish. These are satin finished knives. Uh, but they do have a little hint of stone washing to them, but it's probably, you probably would never look at it and say stone washed, but it's a good knife overall. It's a real nice pattern. It's a real nice blade shape. Um, I've got one other option for you here as well. If this is not quite sheep's footy enough for you, check out this Hogue Trauma. Again, this knife is American made, comes in at about 153 right now. N690 steel, so not a, a particle steel, but it's still a pretty good solid uh, solid material. Or actually, sorry, no, this is N680, which is actually a uh, highly, highly stain resistant steel. Still a good performer, but uh, I think N690 will hold an edge a little bit better, all things being equal. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, comments section. Really cool stone wash blade on this, though, or yeah, really cool Warncliffe blade. So, I can't speak today. Really cool sheep's foot blade with a really good stone washed finish on it. Nice higher flat grind on this. Bar lock, that's Hogue's Able Lock. Not quite as deep carry as the Benchmade, but you do get a nice glass breaker there on the back, as well as the pop out strap cutter too. And the action on these, bounce back, but it's quite excellent. Very, very smooth, really cool knife. 
I said, uh, I, I told you folks to do your worst in your, uh, in your requirements out there. I think you, uh, I think you did. I think you nailed that right there. But I think both of those might be some cool knives that you might want to check out. All right, next question is from Caesar Avila. He says, so I've been stung by the knife collection bug. Me too, my friend. Any, rec any remedies you recommend? No, just gotta buy more knives, man. Well, my question to you is, I need to add a sweet Bowie knife to my collection, budget around 200. Want a knife that looks cool and performs great in the field. Any recommendations? Sure. Um, so you can kind of go two different directions with a Bowie knife. Of course, uh, traditionally a Bowie knife was a, an actual a fighting knife pattern. Um, but nowadays, I think most Bowie style knives tend to be more used uh, in outdoor scenarios rather than combat. Um, the needs of a, a combat knife have kind of evolved away from what a Bowie knife was. Um, so, and I assume that's what you mean by in the field. You want a, a good outdoorsy uh, Bowie knife. Um, and if you want one that looks good, there's probably nothing right now in that kind of price range that screams Bowie knife more than this Svord Von Temsky Bowie. I mean, just check out this awesome hunk of steel right here. Uh, these are made in New Zealand. It comes in at about 190, so it's right in there under your budget. Um, might be a little um, a little too much for uh, for your field knife, um, but it certainly would do a good job. It's a nice thick blade here. Uh, I think we're about quarter inch thick of L6 tool steel, uh, 11 inches in length, plenty there for chopping, splitting wood, that sort of thing. And of course, you got a classic. Uh, cross guard right here with sort of an S shape to it and a very traditional style of straight uh, wooden handle there. Not a whole lot of flare or anything and a little bit of a lanyard hole at the back. So you do have some retention, but you are going to have to be careful when swinging something like this um, just because of that straight handle. So do keep that in mind. Uh, and I will say like in terms of fit and finish, Fords are always a little bit on the rougher side. Uh, which is why with the uh, the materials and everything else you get for this, that's why it's, this is not a more expensive knife. But they all do uh, traditionally perform very well. You can see here we've even got a differential heat treat on this so that the spine itself is going to be a little bit softer so it's going to absorb shock a little bit better. Definitely nothing, like I said, nothing screams buoy quite more than that. However, for an actual field use buoy, an outdoor buoy, um, I don't like the guard on that knife, so I've got a, another option here. This is the Condor Plan A buoy, which is a Julio Diaz design, and I think it's really cool. Now these come in about 130 right now. It's a little bit of a smaller knife than the, uh, that sword, about a nine inch blade here. Uh, what's nice about it is it makes a very interesting alternative to stuff like a Becker BK9 or an SE Hunglis. Uh, the BK9, of course, is a combat buoy, but it maybe doesn't quite um, I, I love that knife, but when you look at it, it doesn't really say buoy knife to me, whereas this Plan A has a, a definitive uh, buoy style blade to it. Blade steel is a little bit thinner, we're 0.2 of an inch, uh, 1075 carbon steel, so nice and tough for those swinging chops, uh, but you've still got plenty of length here to do splits, plenty of thickness, I, I mean, to do splits. But the handle itself, I am a really big fan of. It almost reminds me of a blend between a more ergonomic design and a uh, kukri shape because you've got kind of that kukri type flail right there at the end. Because of that, you can really put a lot of muscle into your swings on this knife and it's not going to be as prone to slipping out. But again, be careful, of course. And without that guard there on the back, you can choke up on this a little bit easier to do more small work. And the balance is actually pretty good when you do that. Now, in terms of sheaths, that sword does come with a nice leather sheath. But being a Julio, du Julio Diaz design, who of course got his start making Kydex sheaths, this one also comes with a very nice gray Kydex sheath rather than leather, which a lot of Condors come with. If you do want a more uh, combat oriented buoy though, I would suggest the SOG Super Buoy. Uh, comes in about 190. Uh, let's see, what are our full specs here? Seven and a half inch blade, OS 8 steel, so not the highest end stuff but it's executed very well. You've got a really nice black and finish there. It's kind of like a mirror polished black almost. And you've got a nice acute tip here at the front and a very classic feeling handle to the, uh, the, with the stacked leather right there and a smaller guard. So you still can choke up a little bit if you need to. Not gonna be quite as comfortable, um, but again, that's not exactly the, uh, the primary purpose of a knife like this. And I'm realizing now that I picked a bunch of questions uh, about fixed blades today, but that's cool by me because I am a fixed blade guy after all. 
、Uh, next question is from Leather Guy three o two. He says, "What three to four inch fixed blade would you recommend to pair with the SE six? Mostly looking for bushcrafting and hunting purposes, maybe some food prep." <clears throat> All right, I got a couple options here.、Um, first off, there's your your nice SE six right here. Really solid primary belt knife. Plenty of length there. Uh, for splitting wood,、uh, and、um, these are fairly balanced too. I've actually found、um, I've used SE sixes before, and I find them pretty easy to do wood carving and stuff with. All right, I got a couple options here.、Um, I've got a Scandi grind and a flat grind option for you to check out.、Um, and the reason I want to show you too is、um, I think if you want a a bushcraft knife,、uh, in my head, I always associate bushcraft with Scandi grinds because you know you want that good wood carving capability. But again, for me, the SE6 works well enough for me for wood carving.、Um, so the first thing I would recommend would be keep it in the SE family. Go with the Ashley Game Knife. These run about a hundred bucks right now. Three and a half inch blade, ten ninety five steel. Ashley Game Knife. This is a hunting knife first and foremost. It's going to do that very well, and it's a good size、uh, to complement that SE6. You've got a nice range of uses covered between these two knives. It's thin enough to do bush or、uh, to do your、uh, your food prep. It's an eighth of an inch thick. Thinner would be better for food prep,、um, but this is going to do okay in a camping situation. And you've got a smooth coating.、Uh, it's a sort of a black stone washed finish rather than a powder coated finish. So again, that's going to be a little bit better than the SE6 for food prep. But you still got enough handle length there to do have some good control over it. They're not super thick, but you're still going to be able to whittle with this.、Um, not too bad. But again, for me, especially the new 3D handled versions, I'd probably be doing more carving with the SE6. But if you do want something that's smaller and better at carving,、um, you can never go wrong with a, a companion Mora blade. You could use the companion, or you could go since you want something that's under four inches, you could go with the Pro S.、Uh, actually, this is the Pro C, which is the carbon steel version,、uh, which carbon steel、uh, typically is nicer for that wood carving stuff. Got your nice Scandi grind. On the、uh, the pro line of of these blades, you have a good amount of belly here, so you can do that hunting stuff, and you can you can kind of do some food prep with this.、Um, you can certainly do some food prep with an eighth inch thick knife with a Scandi grind. I've done it before, but three thirty seconds、uh, or even thinner is even better,、uh, and this is going to have that slightly thinner blade, so you're still going to be able to slice well enough、um, despite having that that Scandi grind, which of course is better for your Your、uh, wood carving, and these are about like fifteen to eighteen bucks. I, I don't have the price right here in front of me. I should. I got a laptop here, but what are you gonna do?、Um, yeah, you just can't go wrong with that either. Another another nice pairing right there. All right, next a question from A H sixty. He says, "Hi David, I like a small fixed blade for hard and dirty use at work. At present, I use the Felic Neven Colt, which I have right here."、Uh, he says, "The blade size and handle length are." Perfect. Is there something similar with a slightly thinner blade stock? I really like how the Colt handle curves down at the end to fit in the hand. Cool.、Um, yeah, I've got the Colt right here. I'm a big.、Uh, I really like Felic Neven stuff. They tend to put out a really high quality product. So yeah, here you go. You've got、uh, a fairly thick blade there. It's not super thick,、um, but on a knife this small, it's not thin either. One option you can go with,、uh, sticking in the Felic Neven family, is go with the WM1, which I have here at the bottom. These start、uh, somewhere just above 125, I think, depending on which option you get. And the blades are a little bit thinner; we're at about an eighth of an inch thick,、uh, rather than the little bit thicker. It's not quite a full 5:30 seconds on the Colt, but it's a little bit thicker.、Um, but that's not a bad option.、Uh, obviously, there's not a lot of handles out there that do what this handle does, which is kind of a shame because I agree it feels really good.、Uh, but the WM1 might be might get you in the ballpark. A little less length; it's not quite as much blade,、um, but you've got that great、uh, laminated felt and even steel, that great convex grind. Now, one other option, if you want to go slightly larger,、um, I did try to keep it in the same,、uh, roughly the same size, but again, I was going for some of that handle, that handle comfort specifically. The Spyderco Bill Moran; these are about 115 bucks, and you can get them in a drop point or a trailing point profile. Like if you like that straight backed. Uh, Puko esque blade on the、uh, Colt, you can get a trailing point on this Moran.、Uh, like I said, a little bit longer,、uh, 
close to a four inch blade here and it is a little bit thinner. It starts at about 330 seconds, I wanna say, based on my eyeball calipers there. And you've got a nice full flat grind going on. So as a result, you kinda of get a little bit of a distal taper as you come out towards the tip, which just means that's narrowing down. So it's gonna feel even thinner when you're cutting out near these front sections. But the reason I picked this, in addition to just that real nice blade shape, is the handle here. Definitely different from that Felic Neven, as you can see, but it's got a Bill Moran handle, and that man was a master of ergonomics. It just melts right into my the palm of my hand. Got a nice pinch grip here for affecting a few different holds. You've got VG10 stainless on the blade, uh, so I don't know if don't remember if any of the Colts came with a, uh, some of the Felic Neven's laminated VG10, but if they do, if that's the one you've got, uh, you're familiar with that steel, so it's going to be a good solid performer. But again, that's another, another kind of reason that uh, I felt like this might be a good option for you. In fact, for our previous guy, our, uh, our SE6 uh, owner, this might be a good option for your companion knife if you're doing uh, just food prep or hunting with it. Uh, maybe not quite as much the uh, bushcrafty stuff, just in terms of uh, a real kind of gorilla grip doing wood carving. It's not quite as comfortable as something like that, uh, that Mora, but it's certainly gonna get the job done. But here's where I throw it to you guys in the comments. If you know of any other knives, kind of like that Colt with that uh, real interesting uh, handle shape there, leave us a suggestion down there in the comments. Maybe I'll do a follow-up next week. All right, next we have a hypothetical here from J3RK115. He says, hey David, what do you folks at the Knife Center believe is the best blade style for an EDC folder? I'm enjoying the spear point style on the Cold Steel Recon 1 right now. Uh, this is another one where I want you guys to chime in below. What is uh, your favorite EDC blade, blade shape? Uh, as for me, um, I like, typically I like a drop point or a straight clip point blade with just a moderate amount of belly. Not a super excessive amount of belly, um, but just a little bit there um, for, uh, for your general purpose uses. That's what I gravitate to. That's what works really well for my, my hands and my style of cutting. But I want to hear from you guys. Let us know in the comments. All right, our last question for today came, uh, came in via email, actually, from Wakey Sui. Uh, it says, hi, David. Here's a question that's occurred to me throughout the years. What are some good options for personal grooming knives and multi-tools? I use my Leatherman Free P4, but it is a little bit big. Um, yeah, cool. Um, this is actually right up my alley, too. I actually use a Swiss Army knife. Um, and in terms of what I think of as what you need for a personal grooming knife, um, are a few things. You need a pair of scissors, uh, which can be used uh, either to trim your nails or to trim some uh, some little beard hairs if you have a little, some little errant things going on there. In addition to that scissors, you're gonna need a nice nail file to keep your nails clean as well as to clean up the edges after you've, uh, you've cut them with the scissors because it's not gonna be the cleanest cut. Um, toothpick and tweezers that the Swiss Army knives have is always good. Uh, and then in, then in addition to that, a nice sharp blade if you, need to do a little shaving if you've like missed a spot. Before I had the full beard, I used to do that every once in a while. I might have missed a spot shaving. I could go in and touch up. And for that, like I said, Swiss Army Knives is the way to go. Uh, their steel is not the, uh, the highest end stuff out there and it tends to run a little soft. But the flip side of that is you can hone them to hair splitting sharp super easily. So it's gonna be good for that, you know, that little bit of shaving needs. Now in terms of that uh, tool set, the classic SD is about the smallest you can get. I actually think it might be a little too small. I'd recommend going bigger and I'll have one for you there. But they actually make, uh, Victorinox does make a Swiss Army knife specifically for grooming. And it's the same uh, size as the Classic SD, just thicker, because it actually has its own set of nail clippers built in. This is the nail clip from Swiss Army and it runs about 20 bucks, real affordable too. But that gives you another extra option besides those scissors which the, uh, the scissors will work uh, for trimming your nails. I have done it before, uh, but this is the old Wanger style of scissors, which has some micro serrations here, which means that the, uh, the nail file is gonna be even more important for cleaning up the edges once you're done. But there you go, you got your, uh, your nice nail file with the cleaner on the end and your nice blade there as well. If you do want a fuller, a fuller sized Swiss Army knife with those things though, I would suggest the, the Evolution S14. Uh, it's about the, uh, the lowest you can get. I've act it's actually still got some of the plastic covers here on the front. I'm not gonna remove that. Uh, but this is about um, as low as you can get that has all those tools without getting so thick with extra stuff you may not want for this style of knife. 
But first of all, you've got the nice full-size blade. There's a good amount of belly here, so you could get to some places with, uh, with the shaving if you need to, and it locks too, which is quite nice. But then you've got your nail file there, uh, your nail, yeah, your nail file cleaner, as well as the older Wenger style of scissors that have that stronger back spring and the micro serrations, toothpick and tweezers, and then of course a few other uh, standard Swiss Army knife stuff as well. Great, great EDC. These come in just under 40 bucks. All right, folks, that's the end of our list of questions today. Make sure to leave your questions in the comments. Maybe we'll get a chance to feature them in a future installment. And again, would love, a, uh, love you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. In the meantime, let me know what you thought of my answers. And if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there, because you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next knife if you're going to put down your hard-earned money on one of these anyway. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time.